Is this the hardcore of the Love Illusion here tonight? I fucking thought so. The fringe of the fringe, is that right? You know, a lot of people are tempted right now to think that this movement is in a difficult position, that it's a challenging time, that it's a tough dilemma that we face. And a lot of people are asking, what comes next? Anybody here wondering what comes next? You're asking the wrong question. If you are asking what comes next, you're asking the wrong question. Now let me explain that for a second, because we have an understanding of freedom that sets us apart. We have an understanding of freedom that motivates us in a way that sets us apart from the rest of society that we think improves our lives. Otherwise, we wouldn't be embracing these fundamental truths that we know in our hearts and our minds and our souls that are motivating us, that keep us going, that keep us here at the end of the road that you might think we are coming to. But again, if you see it as that, you might be tempted then to ask the wrong question. What is beyond the end of the road? And a lot of people think, well, we're, we're working towards the stateless society. We're working towards volunteerism. That's, what, that's what's coming. And I'd be the first to tell you, yeah, yeah, not only is freedom what we are striving for, freedom is inevitable. And as humanity is on this course through history, coming to this point in time where we're able to see a stateless society go, wow, within our lifetimes, we could be free. Oh my God, what a motivating vision that is. What an amazing thing to be fighting for, to be striving for. But if you're looking for that ideal again, you might be in the wrong fight. You might be tempted then to ask the wrong questions. What happens if you have a stateless society? What makes you free? And I think for those of us who are here, who have the courage to ask the truth, to ask the hard questions, and you know, it would be an appropriate occasion, would it not, to reference Patrick Henry? And in his famous, give me liberty or give me death speech, and by the way, I'm gonna tell you why he was wrong. But he said, let the gravity of the situation dictate the measure of honesty that we bring to the conversation. And I gotta be honest, if you're looking for freedom in the future, you will never have it. You will never have it. Because we may achieve a stateless society. But the moment someone gets drunk and punches somebody in the face, hey, for that guy getting punched, it's not a voluntary society anymore, is it? It's an impossible ideal. And we see it as something that we are striving towards, a matter of practical policy, and fighting the political battles, and trying to change policy, and trying to change what other people think about freedom. And we see the threats, we know what, what they are. We know that government, the institutionalization of all of humanity's worst desires to control and dominate others by force and coercion, institutionalized. We know where that comes from. We know the insecurities and the fears and the bureaucratic momentum that drives that. We know the propaganda, we know how that works, we know how people are scared into supporting things that aren't in their best interest. We know all of this. 
Those threats are out there. But I think about, for me, what I do and what I get away with. And when I look at the rest of, the, of society, of all the people that are victims of those bad ideas, I just feel sorry for them. And I realize that we who understand this message, who are striving to continue down this path, we are free already in all the ways that they are not. And I think about the recent case of Brandon Robb, Marine veteran. Fortunately, he's free now. Thanks to the work of so many great people that came to his defense, that came out and helped spread the message of what was happening to him, that for Facebook posts, for Facebook posts, you can have the CI, or the, excuse me, the Secret Service and the FBI. I get all those bullshit bureaucracies confused. Excuse me. Secret Service and FBI came to his house with the aid of local police and took him away. And he actually got his day, not in court, he got his day in the hospital before a judge. And because of a 15 minute hearing, 25 minute hearing, and a few conversations about five minutes that he had with some doctors, they sentenced him to 30 days of psychological rehabilitation. Bullshit. And you know why he's free today? It's not because I got to interview him. It's not because Josh Tolley got to interview his mom. It's not because Nathan Cox was there organizing with Cop Block, making sure that people were out rallying in his defense, no. It was because his family was there. It was because when they were taking him away, as they were putting him in the car, you know who was there recording? It was his family. And they stood up for him. Because he's been on the same journey that a lot of us are. And he took his family with him. And he led that conversation. They were, they were all on the same page. They knew when the government came after one of them, they were coming after all of them. And they stood together. And I wonder sometimes about the shit I get away with. <laughs> yeah. And I know it's because I got the best fucking family anybody fighting for freedom could ever hope to have right here. And that's what this movement is about. It's about expa expanding that family, that family of human beings who understand what freedom really means. And I have to think about where we are as a movement right now. And there's a lot of people who say, well, we can't do this because that'll make us look bad. Oh, you can't, you can't do that kind of activism because you're gonna piss somebody off. Yeah, no shit. That's a good thing. Don't, because you know what? Really, you're, you're going to tell me, I mean, the, all the arguments, all the bullshit arguments that I hear like that, I can say the exact same way. Oh, don't tell the statists about the message of liberty. They might be offended. They might be offended when you tell them that they're a slave. They might be offended when you tell them, oh, you know what? You're kind of a sheep. You notice that? You know what say? Little tax cow, right. Wage slaves. Don't piss them off and tell them the truth. Bullshit. You wanna care about what others think? Guess what? You're not free. You're not free. You wanna be a slave to someone else's bad ideas? I don't think so, I don't think that's what this movement is about. Because that's the only thing that stops you from being free. What's in your own head? What holds you back? You want to be free in the future? 
You want to know what comes next? Patrick Henry ended that famous speech. I care not what others may choose, but for me, give me liberty or give me death. But you know what? I think he was asking the wrong question there. Because it's not that. That's not your choice. You don't have to die for freedom. And to say, give me liberty or give me death, is to say, you know what? You get to decide if I'm free or not. You get to decide if I'm free. You get to give me liberty or give me death. Fuck that. This is the evolution of the freedom movement. This is the evolution of humanity. And I take a long view of human history, and it's very comforting when you're able to step back. And you're able to see this as a continuum. Humanity marches on. Statism is a phase. We are evolving past. Government is about to be rendered completely obsolete by technology and what we are able to use it to do to empower ourselves to share information because knowledge is power and it's in all of our fingertips now with, with I mean you had a, a computer that used to take a building to house in your fucking pocket now. We have kids who are in, you know what, I got, I got an email last week from, from a fan telling me, hey Adam, I've, I've, been, I've been following you for a couple of years, I really like what you do. But you know, I really need some advice. I got, I got some intense questions I got, I got to get your help on. I don't know what to do, but I'm starting middle school next week. And you want to tell me voting is going to make you free? Really? Really? How much has the internet changed your perception of the world? How much has the internet changed your ability to stand up for what you believe in, to share what you're passionate about, to find the truth for yourself. And you know what? I'm fucking embarrassed about my story. You know how long it took me to go from saying, well, I'm a libertarian because I don't want to be a fucking Democrat or Republican, to actually getting the message? It took me about a decade. Yeah, I'm slow as shit. And then, you know, we used to joke, right? What's the difference between a minarchist and an anarchist? And just to be clear, that's anarcho-capitalist, voluntarist, none of the assholes with acid eggs that they're throwing at the RNC, no. About six months, right? That's so last year. You know what the difference is now between a, a, a minarchist and a voluntarist? About two weeks. So if you want to wait for someone to make you free, you want to, you want to see all of that coming, you, you feel that, that next generation coming up, no tolerance. When you grow up with the internet, you grow up with a truth button one click away, you have no tolerance for the kind of problems that exist for lack of information. And that's what we're doing. We're simply improving the market here, right? Staying true to our message about that. We are improving the market of information, showing that freedom is valuable. Freedom is something that you should want for yourself. You know why? Because being free makes your life better. And that's what you enjoy being part of this movement. You want to know the answer to the question, what comes next? Live free now. I'm Adam Kokesh, and I am free. You know, it's the hard course to listen to the guy that's about to get kicked off stage, right? Thank you. Now, <laughs> we have one last announcement for the night, and Many of you know that we were set to march on the RNC tomorrow and that that's not happening. And for those of you that were inconvenienced by that, I apologize. 
There are a lot of reasons why, but there is going to be a march tomorrow. There is going to be a march tomorrow because you can't get this many people together who care about these issues to just stand down. And while we may have found a new mission, I'd like to thank Adam House for giving us a new direction and a mission tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam House, Combat Veterans for Ron Paul. We've been collecting, excuse me, he's been collecting this weekend donations for a local veterans shelter, local homeless shelter where there are a lot of veterans here. And we're gonna be rallying at 9 a.m. at the campgrounds here in the corner of the fairgrounds. And we're gonna be marching seven and a half miles to the New Beginnings Emergency Shelter at 8535 North Nebraska Avenue here in Tampa. And if you don't wanna march with us, you can be there at 1.30 and we're gonna be serving food. You're never gonna vote yourself free, but you can live free now. Thank you very much.